chronological Bible reading for March 20th is Deuteronomy chapters 28 and 29. If, then, if you obey, then blessing. If you disobey, then cursing. This is probably not very popular in today's Western church. People want to ask Jesus into their heart and then carry on with their lives the way they always have, by and large. Maybe insert a little Jesus or a little church or a little Bible reading or a little prayer, or maybe a combination of all of those things, and just muddle through this life and invite your friends to church, maybe, on a good week, and then die and go to heaven someday. Culturally, we have been duped. This is not scriptural. It's not biblical. And some of you might say, David, you're reading in the Old Testament. That was the Old Covenant. We're under a new covenant, a covenant of grace. And I agree with you. We are under a covenant of grace. And yet, I would propose and argue biblically that the covenant of grace began with Abraham. Maybe it even began with Adam and Eve. David didn't keep the law. He ate the showbread. He wore the linen ephod. He did the things only priests, Levites, were allowed to do. And he had a heart after God's own heart. He also committed a lot of sin. He was not perfect. And yet God honored the covenant he had made with David. And so if this new covenant, this better covenant, was always available, even before Jesus came in the flesh, it's so much more available to us now, especially since we have the printed word of God. We have the testimonies of the four gospels in our New Testament and the book of Acts and all of Paul's letters and the other epistles in the New Testament that teach us so much and make it explicitly clear that we are under a covenant of grace. And yet, as with any covenant, what we do matters. The covenant of marriage between a husband and a wife. If the husband goes and cheats on the wife and doesn't provide for her, or if he's mean to her and beats her and instead of loving her, hates her, would anyone judge her for leaving that marriage covenant? No one with a right mind. How much more the covenant of the people of God with God himself. When God says clearly, if you obey me, I will bless you. If you don't obey, I will curse you. And it's not for the purpose of cursing. He doesn't enjoy cursing us. He wants to bless us. He longs for us to enjoy his goodness and live our very best lives. And yet that's only going to happen when we are in fellowship with him because of our obedience to him. And our obedience comes from faith. Listen, no one's going to obey somebody that they don't implicitly trust. Why do we keep the laws of our land? Because it's the right thing to do or because we're afraid of going to jail? Sure, some things are the right thing to do, but paying taxes to fund foreign wars and abortion? It could be argued biblically and logically that paying taxes to the government of the United States is actually a terrible thing to do. They are not good stewards with our money. And yet, we do it by and large because it's the law, not because it's the right thing to do. We do it because we don't want to go to jail. We don't want the IRS to take our homes and our cars and our bank accounts. We believe the government when it says, if you don't do what I tell you, you will pay the consequences. How much more then should we believe our God when he explicitly says to us, if you faithfully obey Yahweh your God and are careful to follow all his commands I am giving you today, it's Moses speaking, Yahweh your God will put you far above all the nations of the earth. All the blessings will come and overtake you because you obey Yahweh your God. 
you will be blessed in the city and blessed in the country. Your offspring will be blessed and your land's produce and the offspring of your livestock, including the young of your herds and the newborn of your flocks, your basket and kneading bowl will be blessed. You will be blessed when you come in. You will be blessed when you go out. Deuteronomy 28, 1 through 6. And it goes on talking about the ways that God will bless you when you obey him. And then it spends even more time talking about how God will curse you when you disobey him. And again, it's not because he longs to punish us. It's disciplining his children in hopes that they would turn back to righteousness so that they can have all of the good things he wants to put out. Friends, we all must search our own hearts. Like David said in Psalm 51, search me, O God, and know me. As Paul wrote in the New Testament twice, examine yourself to make sure that you're in the faith. Test yourself. Are we obeying him? And I'm not talking about going to church. I'm not talking about checking off a box. I'm talking about living a life of faith and obedience, trusting in the one doing what he calls you to do? Is he telling you to give to a ministry or give to your neighbor? And are you doing it? Is he telling you to quit that job or turn off Netflix or even to change churches or maybe to start your own church? Not that it's yours, but you know what I mean. What is God speaking to you? And are you obeying him? May he give you the faith to do so. God bless you, my friends. Thank you for being on this journey with me. We'll see you tomorrow.